Okay, good morning, everybody. Today is Monday, August 23rd, and this is our uh, weekly Monday updates. Um, the exciting news of the weekend was Tropical Storm Henri, um, which was kind of a no-show, but I do want to thank all the emergency teams that got together and prepped for this storm. Jim and his, his squad did a great job getting everything prepared in case it did turn to the east, and uh, luckily it did avoid us. So um, uh, Jim will go into more details on that, but I do want to thank everybody that put all the hard energy into preparing for that. Um, I will note that we do have a um, Board of Selectments meeting coming up tomorrow night, and on the agenda there we have um, some committee appointments, so if you're interested in getting involved in some committees, uh, we're talking about the special town meeting articles, and we will be um, talking about some sewer connections as well as um, putting the mine, old mine at fire station property up for sale. Um, one other thing I will note is that on September 8th and 9th, we are interviewing for new uh, for the positions with um, the school committee. So it's a joint meeting between the school committee and the select board, and we will be meeting the candidates who want to fill that position left by Michael Hayes um, just recently. Um, I'll, Jim, why don't I pass it over to you now, and, uh, and then I'll come back in. Sure. So uh, as Tony was talking about, Henri uh, did thankfully miss us uh, for the most part. We started talking about Henri a week ago, last Monday. We saw the first starts, uh, tracks that were coming this way. Uh, we met Wednesday. Thursday, the reports were that Henri was going to give us quite a blow. We met Friday morning, went over all our decision making, started pre-staging equipment, pre-staging people, discussions as to whether or not we needed to put the storm gates back in at the beaches, how long that would take, what the storm surge was like. Uh, and then over the weekend, we did activate our EOC. We had two meetings over the weekend on Saturday and Sunday, and then another call on Sunday uh, just to make sure what was going on. Uh, again, we did pre-plan, we pre-positioned a lot of equipment because unfortunately, once the storm starts, you can't get those people in that equipment in. So it's a good exercise for us to, to get the EOC open, uh, to go through these steps to make sure that everything was in place, all our equipment was working, what we needed to do, when we needed to do it. Uh, and I think it was good for us that Henri passed us by. Uh, in the summertime, we have a lot more people here. One of our big uh, quantities was how do we get in touch with people who are renting on the water to let them know that a bad storm's coming, to let them know whether they should stay or go? Um, so that's something I think we still need to work on. But all in all, I think it was a good exercise, and we're glad that Henri uh, decided to go west instead of east. And now we can take the lessons learned and hopefully do better when we get a real storm. If we get a real storm, I don't want to jinx us, but uh, uh, have a plan to get in touch with some of those summer residents that might not follow us on social media, that might not be aware of what's going on, uh, particular situation, and only be watching the national news. So that is a good thing, and we will work on making sure we find a way to address that issue. Uh, the water main construction on utility is complete. The services are almost complete. Uh, we expect to be tying that main at the new uh, First Parish Road today or tomorrow, depending on the weather, and then we'll be turning those water services on. People should see a real good increase in their pressure and the quality of the water in those areas. Uh, at some point, we will come back and pave those roads over. They were in rough shape. Putting in the water main is going to pretty much destroy them. So we will put a base coat and a top coat on those probably sometime a little bit later in the fall. Uh, Old Oak and Bucket is continuing. We should finish the mains on Old Oak, Old Oak and Bucket within the next day or two, at which point the contractor will start doing the individual services. Old Oak and Bucket is still closed to through traffic. It will be throughout the project. People should see alternative routes, but local traffic can get through. Uh, water demand for the past week was 1.449 million gallons per day, which is down a little bit from last week. And as we've talked about all summer, significantly lower than our normal summer demand. That is a good thing. Uh, we have received a lot of questions with all this water. Why are we in a water ban? Uh, the water ban is a state imposed water ban for the entire water region, the basin that we get our water from. That is imposed regardless of the amount of water we get and regardless of the amount of water in our reservoir. So that is not in situ with water ban, that is the state's water ban. That goes into effect in May and stays in effect till the fall. Um, usage is down, that's a good thing. However, with the hot weather and the rain and the runoff, we are seeing manganese levels starting to rise in the pond and that will be cause rises in manganese to finish water. It could cause discoloration in your water if you are getting brown water. 
We continue to ask you to let us know either through the water department webpage or by calling the water department. These are data points that we will use as we continue flushing the system and cleaning up the system in the fall. The reservoir is currently still at plus 1.5. Back factory is at plus 4.5. Can't remember the last time we had this much water this late in the summer season. So we will be planning to do a robust flushing program in the fall with this water. Uh, the equipment for the pilot studies is in place down at the treatment plant. We are starting week three of a seven week pilot program. Again, this takes our water and puts it through various treatment uh, processes to determine what is the best process for our particular water when we build a new water treatment plant. Uh, once they're done, they'll go away and they'll come back in the winter time to do the same process when the water is cold. And from that, we will get a design for a new water treatment plan. Uh, the past week, we've had 24 new cases of COVID. That's down two from 26 of the previous week. Uh, still too high, but those numbers are not spiking, which is good. Our positivity rating was 2.93. That's up significantly uh, over the past several weeks, where we've talked about how the numbers catch up with the positivity eventually. Uh, we are still lower than the state, about three quarters of, uh, sorry, lower than the county. We're about three quarters of a percentage lower than the county positivity rate. And we're slightly lower than the state's positivity rate, uh, which was 2.93 uh, over the past several weeks. So the numbers have leveled off a little bit, but it is the Delta variant. It's still very contagious. Uh, people are getting it. You can get it whether you're vaccinated or not. We urge people to get vaccinated, talk to your physician, get a vaccine if it is right for you. Uh, what the data is showing is that people who are vaccinated do not get seriously ill. If they get COVID, do not get hospitalized. And there are almost no fatal cases of vaccinated people who get the COVID-19 uh, disease uh, virus. So right now, what we're seeing, 97% of hospitalizations recently and 99% of recent deaths from COVID, from the Delta variant, are all people who are not vaccinated. Uh, the CDC will be issuing new guidance shortly on the need of whether we need a booster shot, who will need it, and we will pass that information along uh, when we have more definitive information. And if you go up First Parish, you see the work is commencing on the sidewalk from Country Way to the old Senior Center. That'll be a brand new sidewalk with granite curbing. We will also be putting a sidewalk on the opposite side of the street from Central Park up in front of the church. So there'll be a crosswalk from Central Park to the new Senior Center on the campus. Uh, that will allow people to come from the library, the Central Park Housing, and just have to cross First Parish to get to the Senior Center, to get to the food pantry, to get to recreation. They won't have to go across Beaver Dam and then First Parish and then Cudworth and take a long route. Uh, while that is going on, we have been paving down on uh, Jefferson and some of the side streets down there, Washington, Clifton, and Thomas and Jefferson. Those have all gotten a base coat leveling course over the past week. The contract will now come in and raise the catch basins and the manhole covers in preparation for a final course. When the sidewalk is done on First Parish, the contractor will come back and do a final course on First Parish and all the side roads at the same time. We anticipate that'll probably be a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll let people know, we'll give you some advance warning and we're hoping to get it done before the buses roll so not to, um, to interfere with the start of school. Uh, a word to the wise, uh, you will see we've already put a leveling course on First Parish. Um, when we start to pave speeds pick up. So we've already talked to Chief Thompson, the police department, and the police will be doing radar and enforcement in those areas as those roads get down and the speeds tend to pick up. Uh, speaking of the high school, the steam and rink renovations are progressing. The concrete work is done. The preparation work for the base has been finished. The contractor is preparing to put the asphalt down this week. Once the asphalt is down, it must sit for 14 to 21 days before the final surface can be put on. So while the asphalt is curing, the contractor will do the dasher boards and the sides and get it ready for the final course on top. Uh, we are still expecting a September finish. We met with the schools to make sure that any work we're doing down there once school starts will not interfere with what they're doing and ensure that no deliveries will occur during pickup and drop off time. So that will continue. We'll be done in September, but there will be a little overlap uh, with the start of school. The green sand filter, well 17A, uh, we are getting into the final stages of that. The permanent power is finally installed and ready to go. So we'll begin testing the equipment in 17A very shortly. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this green sand filter takes manganese and iron out of the water, which causes discoloration. That well has been offline. It's about 225 to 250,000 gallons of water a day. 
Uh, once we get the testing done, we're hoping the DEP will come in for final inspection in September and then allow us to return that water treated for the iron and manganese without the discoloration into our system later on in the fall. That'll be a big, big help to us going forward. Uh, and we will no longer be putting discolored water with iron and manganese into our system. Uh, Widow's Walk Clubhouse, again, renovations are ongoing. The building envelope is pretty much complete. I think they still have to finish the bump out for the bathrooms in the back. We've done the uh, base coat on the parking lot, which you see the final coat won't go down until the project is finished. You'll also see when you look at it right behind uh, the 18th green, a large uh, concrete basin. That's the sedimentation settlement tank. Uh, as we've talked about before, we put a green sand filter on well 18, which is over by the transfer station. The wash water, which cleans those filters, will be pumped over to the golf course into that sediment tank. It'll settle out the iron and manganese, and then that water will be able to use to water the golf course. Uh, hopefully, we're thinking about 10,000 gallons a day to help the golf course going forward. That'll be a big help, and it's a good way to use water that otherwise would just be flushed away to waste. So we're glad to see that moving. The golf course renovations are still on schedule to be completed October, November, at which point we'll be preparing to bid out a new operator for the golf course uh, lunch and breakfast and dining room that we're building. And hopefully that'll all be ready and up and running for the spring. The golf course is doing great. It's in fantastic shape with all the rain. So if you haven't been down there, please go down, see Ian, play around. Uh, really looks nice. And I think people are really enjoying getting out there and playing. Last couple of things. I promise if I can get my page over. Uh, Hummer Rock Fire Station is the last thing I have. If you are on Hummer Rock now, you'll see the walls are up on the new fire station uh, court, living quarters. The roof trusses are up. So that is ongoing. We should start, be starting to work on the base shortly. That is a project that is scheduled and must be done in the fall before the cold weather comes. Uh, originally, that project was just kind of some renovations to the building and adding a bay. And then in the storms of 2018, uh, that station actually got flooded, which necessitated putting the station up on piers. And we ended up having to construct a brand new station down there. It's necessary, it's needed, uh, but we got to get it done before the cold weather because right now the truck is up on fourth cliff in a tent and we got to get it back inside before it gets cold. We are still on schedule for that, uh, but they're going to have to get working to get it done. So if you take a ride down there, you'll be able to see the outline of the new living quarters in Hummerock. And that's what I have for today. Thanks, Jim. Um, one thing that Jim mentioned, I just want to bring everyone's attention. School is going to be back in session in the next couple of weeks, but activities are already starting to pick up. So driving around the schools, just be extra careful. There's going to be more activity, more kids around, and um, take that precaution. Um, in closing, I do want to um, pass along the board's condolences to the Ladd family. We've heard recently that Richard, Richard Ladd had passed away, and they have been very generous to the town of Situate in terms of redeveloping Cole Parkway and the Cudworth Cemetery with Paul Barron there. So um, we're very sad to hear that and we pass our condolences on to them. Um, that's all I have. Everybody have a good week and uh, I think we'll see more on next Monday.